The Subaru Forester was a standout performer at our recent mid-size SUV mega test here at Chasing Cars. And not because it's fast, sexy, or particularly sharp to drive, but rather because this mid-size SUV really just gets the basics right. It's very practical, very comfortable, and well-equipped considering the price. And so we thought, why not get it back for a bit more of an extended test of this facelifted model here, the grade that I have behind me, which is the Range Topping S. Now it's 44, 190 before on-road costs, but you can get a hybrid option of this vehicle for about three grand more. But if you've seen a previous comparison we've done between this hybrid model and a Toyota RAV4 hybrid, then you'll know that perhaps the Subaru hybrid system isn't quite as competitive with Toyota's latest technology. And therefore I think you're better saving that three grand and perhaps just going for the basic petrol because this thing is really respectable in the way it performs. But we'll get into all of that in a minute because today we're gonna to be doing our usual thing, jumping inside the car, testing out the practicality, the build quality, fit and finish inside the cabin, how big the boot is, and of course, talking about running costs, then taking this Forester out for a drive to see how it stacks up now, later in 2022. So let me know your comments and thoughts about the Subaru Forester down below this video. And if you haven't done so already, we'd also love it if you could hit that subscribe button. This fifth generation of Forester went on sale in Australia in about September 2018, but didn't look that different from the car that replaced it, and after its facelift in late 2021, it doesn't look that different either. But this S model gets a blacked out grill, slightly different grill inserts, updated headlights, and new tail lights. I definitely don't think this is the best looking SUV out there. The Toyota RAV4 looks better, and the Volkswagen Tiguan looks better, and the Kia Sportage looks better in my opinion, but looks don't matter if those cars can't beat this car's interior comfort comfort and practicality, which we'll check out now. The Forester's cabin definitely gives off the vibe that it's been around for a few years and has had some technology changes over time. That's best shown off by the slightly scattered switch gear. So down here by my right knee, I've got things for the power tailgate and also for the eyesight system and blind spot monitoring and auto stop start. And yet, if I wanna turn off, for example, lane keep assist or AEB for whatever reason, I have to go up here next to the sunroof controls to operate those things. Again, this crops up with the HVAC controls, which the controls of which are down here, but the screen is mixed in with a trip meter and fuel consumption gauge that's featured up here that also shows off different camera angles. But they're really the major criticisms of this car because everything else that Subaru has done in this cabin is actually really quite sensible and it feels quite high quality for a vehicle that only costs 44,190 plus on-road costs, which isn't super expensive compared to this car's rivals in high-spec trims, which are all up around 50 grand. So it's a little bit more affordable. Things like this nice leather appointed steering wheel with stitching, lots of soft touch materials up here on the door tops and also down here on the transmission tunnel where I'm resting my knee. You do have a little bit of a flourish of gray leatherette material here, which adds a little bit more lightness to this cabin. Not that it needs it though, because with a sun roof, this thing is so light and airy in here. My visibility is fantastic as well. These A-pillars are really thin, and as we'll talk about more in the driving, when you need to look out the rear three-quarter, this Subaru is actually really airy, so you can see absolutely everything. That's great. You also got this uh, eight inch touchscreen up here, which isn't as large as the larger Outback's portrait screen and doesn't look quite as crisp. But that said, it still works really well. Quite responsive. And although Subaru's own in-house navigation software looks really dated, you can just plug your smartphone in using a wired connection for this vehicle. And that works seamlessly. You also get things like DAB, which is hooked up to this really very high quality eight speaker Harman Kardon stereo. This is one of the best sound systems in its class, which is a little bit of a surprise given it's only got eight speakers and some other vehicles move the game onto 10, but yeah, it just sounds really good. Then we've got analog dials in front of me with a crisp 4.2 inch TFT screen there. Again, nothing super special, but something that's legible and it just works. Doesn't look sexy, but it is very functional. Again, the functionality comes to a four with the generous door bins, two cup holders in the middle here, you got a little tray here that's rubberized for phones and that sort of thing, though it's not quite big enough for modern smartphones, but we'll gloss over that. And then under this tray, we've got some coin storage for the tolls that you need to pay that you don't need to pay anymore because we've all got e-tags and a really nice generous bin with a 12 volt socket there as well. Finally, this extra little cubby just in front of the gear stick and very comfortable, though absolutely not sporty at all seats. They're appointed in leather in this top spec grade. They've got two stage heating, high and low. They've also got electric adjustment. Now they're not very supportive, but they're actually surprisingly comfortable over long journeys, though I do have to mark this car 
are down for not featuring lumbar adjustment for the driver's seat, even though it feels like the seats are actually very well designed to keep you comfortable on long trips. So yeah, the Subaru Forester's cabin is nothing sexy and nothing super special, but one that simply works. The Forester's back seat continues much like the front. There is so much airiness and visibility back here. It's fantastic. The rear bench is set a little bit higher than the front seats, which gives this great stadium seating effect. I can barely see the bonnet of this car. I can just see all the road ahead of me, which I think is fantastic for quelling road sickness. As for space on offer, I've got plenty of knee room, heaps of tow room as well. And headroom, I do have lots of headroom. Uh, I'm six foot two, so fairly tall for a back seat. The sunroof of this S grade does cut into headroom just a tiny bit. So if you're sort of a fair bit taller than me, it might not be the most comfortable place. But really, that's a bit of a nitpick in this car because yeah, it's so airy and spacious back here. You've got a really usable middle seat as well. And if you've only got two passengers in the back, a nice solid flip down armrest with two cup holders. You've also got really decently sized bottle holders in the doors and further the storage behind where you can put the bottle. You do have this scratchy material back here just on the front of the door tops, but at the back of the door tops, you've got this leatherette appointing uh, of the door cards and you've got a soft armrest as well. You've also got these two tiered map pockets, so great for something like a uh, phone or something like that, or an iPad or holding anything that you need to do. A little bit more separation. Air vents back here, obviously. We don't have a separate climate setting back here though and we also don't have outboard heated seats in this car we can't get them in australia i assume those blanks are for range topping models in other markets where that is an option and finally we've got two 2.1 amp usb a chargers to keep your devices charged so yeah really good back seat in the forester let's check how easy it is to fit the chasing cars chart seats Fitting the Chasing Cars child seats in the Subaru Forester is a dream. The doors open super wide, the roof line is nice and high, and the bench is wide enough to just about squeeze someone in between the two child seats, not to mention the easy to access Isofix ports and simple to remove headrests. It all just works. One of the reasons the Forester is so beloved in Australia is because of its practicality. You can easily fit stuff like bicycles and large flat pack furniture into the back of this car, which makes it a perfect compatriot for you to go mountain biking or road riding or camping or anything like that. Of course, the full-time four-wheel drive really aids its credentials on that side of things because it allows you to get further off the beaten track than a lot of other SUVs that have a front bias sort of Holdex type all-wheel drive system, unlike this fully bona fide system, but more on that in a minute. The boot space itself is 498 litres, which is pretty decent. And as you saw, this S-Grade gets a power tailgate. That's all nice. You also get in this S-Grade a speaker for the Harman Kardon stereo and electrically flipped down or electronically actuated flip down rear seats. Now they fold really nice and flat. And as a bonus, this car is just long enough for me to lie in the back diagonally if I wanted to sleep overnight somewhere and didn't want to camp outside the car. And I think that's actually quite important in a Forester because it does have that outdoorsy image. Other things in the boot are the fact that it's really nicely finished back here, really high quality feeling carpet, a couple of curry hooks, 12 volt socket so you can charge your phone or run a little tiny fridge or something like that. And then under the boot floor, we of course have a full size spare tire because that's exactly what you expect from a Subaru. The ADR combined fuel consumption figure for the Subaru Forester is 7.4 litres per 100 k's. In real world testing in urban and suburban environments where this midsize SUV should feel at home, we only manage to average 10.5 litres per 100 k's, which isn't great for a vehicle like this, though it will run on 91 RON unleaded petrol here in Australia. Now you can cut your fuel costs by going for the hybrid variant, but as we found in previous testing, the Subaru Forester Hybrid definitely doesn't give the low, low running costs of a Toyota RAV4, which can realistically get under five liters per 100 Ks. The Subaru still sort of hovers around seven to seven and a half liters per 100 Ks in hybrid guys. As for servicing, it's due every 12 months or 12 and a half thousand kilometers at a total cost over five years of $2,423 and the median budget direct customer over the last 12 months paid $885 to comprehensively insure their new Subaru Forester. Now your premium may vary based on things that insurers take into account, such as your age, where you live, your driving history, and whether or not you garage the vehicle. The Subaru Forester. This is arguably not its best aspect, driving it out on the road. Not to say that it's a bad car at all, it just, isn't where this vehicle sparkles. There are sportier options out there for those who like to drive a little bit more quickly. And that's gonna be how I'm assessing this car is that it doesn't have any pretensions of being sporty. 
the two and a half liter naturally aspirated engine is actually pretty adequate for what this car is designed to do, which is sort of ferry people around. Yes, on the freeway, above about 100 k's an hour, especially if you've got this car fully loaded, the CVT and the 136 kilowatts of power and 239 newton meters of torque does sort of struggle to propel this car along, but ultimately it's adequate enough to propel a 1500 or thereabouts kilogram SUV around most of the time, and I think that's fine. Now the CVT can be a little bit rubber bandy and it's definitely a little bit noisy when you uh, lay into the throttle and it doesn't feel super refined, but it is a very smooth gearbox in other ways. There isn't really a jerkiness. The throttle pedal is actually quite responsive in this car as well, especially just off the top and that gives it a feeling of speediness around town. And yeah, so you, you can make decent progress in the Forester and when you do start pushing on, there's a really nice secure feeling to the chassis of this car. Again, it's not pointy or sporty, but it, it feels like it has your back, especially in inclement conditions like we're in now, where it's a little bit wet outside, knowing you've got that full-time four-wheel drive to get you out of trouble, and a really decently tuned ESC system as well, makes this Forester quite pleasant to drive. Now let's talk a little bit about ride comfort, because that's what matters in this vehicle, I think, more than pretty much anything else. And it is a very comfortable vehicle. It feels plush and soft most of the time. Sometimes when coming off urban speed humps at low speeds, you do notice that the rear is a little firmer than the front. It's like the ride frequencies are a little bit out and then the actual damping at the rear is a little bit lackluster. That's a classic Subaru trait that will only get worse as this car ages, but ultimately it's not bad and it does feel like it's more tuned for comfort and relaxation than anything else. Now let's get back to that absolutely fantastic glass house that this vehicle has because it's one of the best on sale, really, it honestly is. You can see so much out of the front of this car. The mirrors are big, I've got huge windows, and as I mentioned in the cabin, you have almost no rear three-quarter blind spot. The same can't be said for some of this car's rivals, like the Kia Sportage, for example, or even the Havel H6. They're both a little bit harder to see out of. Now add to that Subaru's updated uh, safety suite in this vehicle, their EyeSight safety technology which works on cameras, and things are pretty good. You've got a lane keep assist system that works above 60 k's an hour to trim your line and keep the car in its lane. That's really nice and actually feels more mature than I remember it feeling before the facelift of this Forester. You've also got an adaptive cruise control in this vehicle, which is okay, uh, but not the best in class. Certainly not quite as good as one you'd find in a Volkswagen, but not bad. And then things like frontal AEB with pedestrian and cyclist detection. And this car got five stars in its 2018 ANCAP safety test here in Australia. However, it would lack the necessary equipment to get the same five stars today because it doesn't have junction AEB and it also doesn't have reverse AEB. Now it's not a criteria, but it is a really nice thing to have. You've also got this funny driver monitoring software in here, so uh, when you get this car set up for your preferences, it'll recognize the driver that gets into the car by doing a sort of face scan thing. Uh, so that's pretty cool, especially if you share this vehicle with someone else, it'll save your preferences, and that's kind of the idea behind it. And unlike the Outback, it is quite easy to turn a lot of these aids off. As I mentioned before, we've got the button to turn off the lane keep assist if it's annoying you. So yeah, interacting with this thing is pretty good. Refinement as well is quite good apart from that engine noise. There isn't too much road noise despite this vehicle being such a brick out on the road. It doesn't look very aerodynamic, but it doesn't seem to generate any high-pitched noises, no suspension thunks. Um, and I'll come back to drive modes a little bit as well because we do have a legitimate full-time all-wheel drive system in this vehicle. And that's great if you're gonna be wanting to off-road a vehicle like this. Not, you know, heavy duty stuff, but a little bit of light duty off-roading where you wanna to get to some hiking trails or a more interesting mountain bike trail or something like that. You've got snow and dirt and you've got deep snow and mud modes as well, which prime the vehicle's traction control systems and accelerator calibration and the calibration of the CVT to best suit those conditions. So yeah, a bit of a summation there of the Forester. It drives really gently out on the road. It's not gonna set your life on fire, but it is sure-footed and it does have enough talent to get you out of a sticky situation if you get yourself into one on the road. And I think that's exactly what the Forester needs. The Subaru Forester is a funny car because unlike its rivals such as the Toyota RAV4 and Kia Sportage, it has historically been a really easy to recommend vehicle. It's always been very decent, very practical, not fast or particularly sexy except in XT Turbo guys, but it's just always done the job and the same is true today. 
Yes, it's got a CVT. Yes, that two and a half liter naturally aspirated boxer isn't the sweetest engine in the class, but it just works. And combined with that fantastic boot space, airy interior and ease of fitting child seats to this vehicle means that it would just slip into your daily life as family transport really easily, I reckon. But of course, I'd love to hear your opinions on that, whether you've bought yourself a Forester and you think the same, or you decided to go for one of these car's rivals, let me know down below. And while you're down there leaving a comment, we'd also love it if you could hit subscribe if you haven't done so already, and also tap that bell icon. And as always, thank you very much for watching Chasing Cars.